notice that, like, say for example, me, I look at people with real pretty curly hair, and I go, oh, I would love to have some of that curly hair. And then people with really curly hair might go, oh man, love to have some of that straight hair. Okay? Or they might go, oh, who does your eyebrows? You can be like, no, I'm not a natural. <laughs> okay? Or, you know, it could be somebody who might have the, the in between, where it's not really curly, curly, not really straight, straight. Okay? This is due to our structure in that cuticle. When you begin, like if we were to take a piece of hair, all right, and just yank it out, and then if we could cut it crossways and look straight down into it, this is the view we would have. If we could do that. If we had that microscopic ability, okay, this would be the view. So you would begin to see that we would have our, they're showing all of these layers that could be present. The middle portion is that medulla. This right here being the cortex, this being the cuticle. If we continued looking down and could get all the way into that ball, we begin to see these sheaths that are present. And because it is this portion, the medulla, the cortex, and the cuticle, that are the part that are extending outside through the outer layer, as we look at that, having that particular structure and based upon whether that is round or oval or flat, for that um, medulla cortex and cuticle determines whether hair is straight, wavy, or curly. Well, white. What makes it turn white? Okay, hair color is going to be due to different pigment granules. So there will be little pieces in this hair root area. Now, they have some really interesting names to them, and you don't have to remember this, okay? But to give you an idea, all right, the granules that will give us brown to black hair, they're termed U melanin, like EU melanin. If we got red hair, it's the U melanin plus something called pheo melanin, like P H E O. You don't have to write this down. If it's blonde, you have little of the E, the U melanin, but you have quite a bit of the pheo, P H E O. Uh, melanin. Now, the lovely gray and white. All right. Yes. The gray and white. We have scarce or absent melanin. And in the medulla, the middle portion of this hair, you find air. It's one of the reasons that when we go to um, like color the gray hair, depending upon the amount of the air that might be present and so forth, can affect how well the hair will take up the color and keep it, okay? So that's what kind of makes it kind of hard for us. Now, I do know that over time, you do get a gradual decrease in the production of that pigmentation. And that can lead to hair getting lighter. You know, like some people, and maybe when they were really young, might have had really dark hair. But as they're getting older, 
it lightens up a little bit to that point where we get gray. Gotta love it, right? Okay, this is where those follicles, we get much less production of those U, Theo, and so forth melanins. And then, of course, genetics can play a role. They say to look at your parents and see like what their level of gray was, when did they start turning gray, and chances are it's going to be the same for you. Now, do you guys know that stress can turn hair gray? Yeah. You want to know why? I always ask my husband that. Okay, so you got to love this term right here. Stress triggers telogen effluvium. Yeah, that's a fun term. Say that ten times. Also, at the time of stress, you lose hair. You know, you might see your hair get thinner. If it is a significant stress and you've been under that stress for a long time, like maybe there's been a really traumatic event in your life, okay, um, it will actually trigger this particular release of this product. And your hair will shed quicker. And then as it grows back, because this product got released into the, the matrices and so forth that are present, your hair comes back gray instead of colored. You don't have any of either the brown, black, red, blonde, or whatever. It'll come back as gray. So, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. In other words, when you have stressors that take place, remember, it has to be something that is extremely traumatic. For example, I can't remember if y'all know this or not, um, nine years ago, lost my son very tragically. He was my only child. And um, it, takes, it takes at least a year for the event in the brain for neurons to form around it, that you even begin to feel like life is even normal in any way, which it's not, it'll never be normal again. Um, and yes, my hair came back gray. And I had lost a lot of it. Um, and the hair that grew back is this white. It was a totally different gray. Um, and I know why now, okay, because of that particular product that got released. And so, um, yes, it makes it very hard for me to, I tried one time to like let it grow out. I was like, no, I don't want this to grow out, let it be, you know, whatever color it's supposed to be. And then I was like, oh, I hate that. So, you know, you kind of go back trying to, to cover it up, but it, it's a process. So the hair, it can come back and the hair that comes back, believe it or not, because if y'all ever know anyone who might have undergone um, cancer treatments and they lost their hair and their hair comes back a different color or a different, um, might have been curly, you know, straight or straight, might be curly, okay? These are reasons why, because it's these chemicals that are getting affected. So it's really kind of cool and the shape of that cuticle. You know, is it round, is it oval, or is it flat contributing to it? And of course, genetic play, genetics plays a part. So it's pretty interesting what happens with hair. All right. Um, okay. I know y'all are tired of hearing me talk. So we're going to stop right there for today. The lab for six is really simple, but we'll probably do that on Wednesday. I've got something else I want you guys to do. Um, if you would, put your, put the test back on the table, I'll come around and pick those up. Um, 